Today's going to be my first attempt at a true crime video, something that I'm very much interested in and something that I can never take my mind off. I can be laying in bed at night and I will literally doze off <laughs> to these sorts of videos, so I thought I'd give it a shot in making my own myself. So, today I'm going to cover a case which I don't think is actually that popular. I've not seen any videos of it online and the reason that I know about it is because I saw a documentary on Channel 5 probably about this time last year and that literally sparked my interest in this case. So I thought it'd be good to share with you this case as I haven't seen any other people on YouTube cover it and it is quite a disturbing one which most of them are but I think it's quite interesting too. So today I'm going to be covering the murder of Helen Bailey. Helen was 51 and she was from Newcastle. She lived most of her life in Northumberland and then she lived in Hertfordshire. Now this case is quite different because she was she actually had quite a high profile. Helen was an author mostly of children's books and wrote books such as The Crazy World of Electra Brown. In total she had about 22 short stories, a lot of them were teen or children's and she did actually write one adult novel. The first adult novel that she wrote was called When Bad Things Happen in Good Bikinis. Unfortunately in February 2000 2011. Sorry if I've changed position, it's probably because my battery just died and I've had to change it, but let's carry on. So Helen's husband died when they went on holiday together in 2011. He actually died on holiday when he was in the swimming pool, he drowned. Helen wrote this book to deal with her grief and she also briefly mentioned her new fiancé Ian Stewart. Ian Stewart was 56 years old and he was a former software engineer and a father of two. Ian was also previously married and his wife Diane collapsed and died in their garden. This was in 2010, so just a year before Helen's husband died. So Ian Stewart met Helen at a vulnerable time in their life on an online grief website, which was for people whose loved ones had died or their partners had died. So Helen obviously saw something in Ian, which she felt comforting to her. They both had something in common. They'd both lost somebody they loved and she used him as a sort of comfort blanket maybe. So Helen was reported missing in April 2016. Oh, she's stuck in the house. Hello there, my partner has been missing since Monday and not contacted anyone. Said she was going away, hasn't gone any that way she said she was going. So um, we've just decided we should report it. Oh okay, so it hasn't been reported already? No it hasn't, no. Okay, right. Um, and she's been missing since Monday? Yeah. Uh, what's your partner's name? Helen Bailey. Helen Bailey. Is that B-A-Y-L-E-Y? -Y? No, B-A-I-L-E-Y. -Y. And what's her date of birth? Oh, crikey. God, she didn't find me there. 22nd. Right, just let me double check. One second. Oh, God. She was missing for three months. While she was missing, Stuart was questioned a number of times about some of his actions. So after these three months have passed, Helen was actually found in her cesspit under her house and she wasn't alone. She was buried with a dog, Boris, her dash hound. There was always suspicions from Helen's family about Stuart. Helen's mother didn't feel very settled at the fact that Helen had moved on so quickly and she felt that she was in a vulnerable state. She said her daughter was spaced out a lot of the time and she didn't seem to remember things like she left her dog on a beach and she used to do things like walk out the shop with a scanner still in her hand or items what she'd forgot to purchase. An explanation for such actions was that Ian Stewart was actually sedating her with prescribed drugs for himself which he had been prescribed a year earlier by his doctor. It was found that Stewart actually suffocated Helen in a drug induced state and buried her in the cesspit of their home. Stuart acted like a concerned fiance, like anybody would, because you would be worried if your loved one went missing. So this wasn't that suspicious to the police at first. He even had flyers printed out so people would be looking for her and the suspicion would be moved away from him. He even said that there was a note written by Helen when she left saying that she needed some time alone and she needed some time to think. So there wasn't really any suspicion there in the first place. Stuart later changed his story when Helen was found dead and said that, that Helen was kidnapped from their home and that they dumped her body at the house to frame him. One of the sad things about Helen being discovered was that the post-mortem suggested that she might have still been alive when she was dumped in the cesspit, which must have been absolutely awful if it was the case. Helen's brother came forward and said that Helen and himself were in the garage one day and they had a photo together just near the cesspit just because it was like outside in the garden area and the cesspit was in the background. So her brother asked questions about the cesspit because he thought it was a well, like a wishing well. So Helen like actually made a joke herself that it would be a good place to hide a body. Clearly joking of course, but apparently Stuart was actually in earshot of that conversation. So this could have sparked the idea of where to bury Helen. So when Stuart was arrested, police arrested him on suspicion of the murder of Helen. 
I'm Detective Sergeant Dave Sharp from Major Crime Team. Okay, mm -hmm. I've got a warrant to search the address. Section 8 work course. Arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Helen Bailey. Are you joking? And of disposing her body in a manner to are likely to instruct the coroner and the theft of money of Helen Bailey. Okay, so you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do a mention in question in front of the United Iron Court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Okay, all right, just sit down. Okay, so my name's Laurie. I'm also a sergeant from the Major Crime Team. So, one of me, you and you go upstairs and you can get your chains, is it? Yeah, so yeah, kind of like the Lakers. So, he was taken to the police station and he was questioned. He didn't reply to any of the accusations and he just did not say a word. Did you kill Helen Bailey? Did you intend to kill her? Or was this an accident? What happened? Did you just lose control, lose, just lose it? Some big argument and you killed her. And you've been covering up ever since. Because if that's what's happened, you need to tell us now. Because this could be your last opportunity to speak to the police about this. You are here on suspicion of murder. You need to tell us what happened. Not only was Stuart found guilty of murder in Helen, he was actually found guilty of a number of things. He was found guilty of fraud, as he altered a standing order from Helen. So there was £600 that went into Stuart's account each month and he changed this to £4,000, which is a significant difference if you think about it. £4,000 from £600. He also visited Helen's solicitor to try and speed up the process of some of the properties which were on sale, which is an action which should have been questioned in the first place, even if Helen wasn't missing. Why wouldn't Helen organise these things herself? They were her properties after all, they still wasn't married. On the day of Helen's murder, Stuart was also seen going to the tip to dump something which was a large white item that somebody reported it as. So maybe it was like a duvet cover or something which was used within the murder. Stuart even claimed that he went to Helen's holiday house to see if she was there and he actually took her phone with him before dumping it and it connected to the Wi-Fi so they know that Helen wasn't actually there, it was just Stuart with her phone. Stuart seemed really relaxed throughout the time that Helen was missing, which is weird in the first place. If my boyfriend was missing and I hadn't heard from him, I hadn't seen him, and he was missing for such like a long or short amount of time, I'd be I would not be settling. And Stuart actually went home to get a Chinese takeaway after watching his son play bowls. I just can't comprehend that, like, how, how would you do that? Like, how would you just take it off your mind? Even for one second, I'd feel guilty if it was off my mind and I wouldn't want it to be off my mind. The post-mortem from Helen's body found that it was, it was the medication Zepiclone, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I'm probably not, which had been in her body since early February. Helen's internet searches were also revealed and there was things like, why am I falling asleep at work? Why can't I stay awake? Why am I so tired? Helen said to her mother that she was worried that she was losing her mind. So of course, Stuart was found guilty of murdering Helen and of course fraud and perverting the cause of justice. The prosecution said that once Helen was effectively sedated, suffocation would have been quite simple, enabling the defendant to kill her with little or no resistance. The trial judge sentenced Stuart to life with a minimum of 34 years. He said that Stuart obviously poses a danger to women if he gets in a relationship with them. The judge said that he was in no doubt that this was a clear case of murder with intention of gaining financially and living a better life with more money. He said that these were the most aggravating factors for the crime. So Helen was a much loved woman by her family, by her friends. She had so much going for her. She published so many books which were successful. Her estimated revenue in total was three million pounds, excluding properties. Her house alone was worth 1.3 million pounds. Stuart obviously had that intent there. He preyed on her when she was vulnerable. He got into a relationship with her shortly after her husband had died, despite his wife dying a year previous. Helen seemed to have been the perfect victim for Stuart, unfortunately. Not only did he murder Helen, he actually murdered her dog and put her in the cesspit with her. I just can't comprehend how disgusting this man is. So there was questions as to why the police didn't find Helen for three months. The house had been searched twice, 
There had been thorough searches all around the house, there'd been forensics and nothing was found. The only reason that they searched a cesspit was because a neighbour actually tipped them off about it. So when they actually went in to have a look at the cesspit, they actually saw Helen's arm hanging out of the cesspit, which must have been awful. It's honestly such a sad case as there was no malicious, there was nothing malicious about Helen. She never wanted to hurt anyone. She was grieving. She was in a bad place and she did not deserve to die. But it's, ha it's good that we have these books to look back on. She's got something, she'll be remembered. But unfortunately, it might not be for the right reasons. But we can still respect her and we can still appreciate her. So thank you for watching this video. I'm not sure how well it's gone. It is my first time doing it might seem a little jumbled up but hopefully it all makes sense. As I said this case hasn't been covered by anybody else so I did want to give it a go. I did want to inform everyone that this is an existing case. So thank you for watching. If you did enjoy it give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more let me know below because I do love like in a, not in a weird way maybe it is slightly weird but I do love these cases and I do genuinely fall asleep watching these videos at night. And I don't know how, because how do you sleep knowing these things have happened?